the Space Center. That's cool. We're at the space station. Cool. It's pretty cool, right? When you walk in, you download the Houston Space app. It's pretty cool. Yeah, hey, whatever, you know. Cool. Let's go check out the moon rover. Cool. It's hard to see. But there's a Mars meteorite right there. Cool. Visitors of Mars, the map. Oh, we're kind of spread all over the place a little bit. Cool. Okay. It weighs this 30 weighs, pounds. Earth weighs 30 pounds. How long could you carry it? And Mars weighs 10 pounds. How much longer can you It's not a very good The gravity on Mars is one third as strong as the gravity on Earth. How does that feel? <laughs> a little bit different? The current weather on Mars, 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Is it sunny? But it looks like they grow in bags like this. I don't know what's going on. So they can minimize the size of it probably until it grows. That's pretty cool actually. That's how they grow on the space shuttles. They're called space crops. The inside Orion. They don't give you much room in there, that's for sure. the tram cool you have to register on your app in order to get on the tram it's I guess it's about a half hour ride whoa whoa we're going up there and there's ladies and gentlemen we are now leaving Space Center Houston and beginning our journey to the Johnson Space Center one of 10 NASA field centers and the heart of human spaceflight for the last 50 years. A little known fact about the land that JSC sits on, it was once owned by Rice University and was donated to NASA to build the Johnson Space Center back in 1962. Before that, the land was owned by the Humble Oil Company, which you now know as Exxon Mobil, him to work with the local school districts and the future farmers of America to create what's called the Longhorn Project. This allowed inside to see the Longhorns. We're going to go inside the Saturn building. Wow.
Yeah, like you can get the info that he's talking about. I know, I want to record everything, but it's hard because, like, I don't have much, much time right here, you know what I mean? Um, it's really hard to put this to scale, but that's the guy doing the speaking right there, and I would say... One rocket. Pretty incredible if you ask me. This is just a rocket. Just to get you 40,000 miles. No, I'm sorry. 40 miles above Earth. Then they discard it. That's incredible. In order to maintain orbit around the Earth, whether you're the International Space Station or a satellite or a rocket, in order to maintain and keep that orbit, you have to be traveling 17,500 miles per hour. Because if you go any faster, you move further out into space. If you lose the orbit, if you go any slower, you eventually get pulled down by Earth's gravity. So 17 times the ideal speed necessary to orbit the Earth, which they had to do about two and a half times before we could head to the moon. Because they had to check out all the systems necessary to go to the moon to make sure everything was working mechanically as well as communications. So they orbited the Earth about two and a half times, and then they pointed the rest of the rocket in the direction of where the moon was going to be in four days, and they fired this engine a second time. The second burn got us to, an, to a speed in the direction of the moon at 25,000 miles per hour. That speed is necessary because at that point, you pull away from the influence of the Earth's gravity. It is no any of the stage twos that were used on these. Okay? Any questions so far? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on down to stage three. We'll talk more about it. Over on the wall, over there. Cool, we're gonna walk that way. That's awesome. You can see everybody that went on all the different missions. Okay, at this point, stage two has gotten us to an. At this point, the parts of the rockets that we have left, starting down here at the very end, that long eagle rocket, that white eagle rocket down there. We we got rid of that two minutes into launch. That's part of the launch escape system that I talked about outside. Uh, if it's not used within the first two minutes of launch, then it's not needed, and they get jettison that and it falls into the ocean. Right behind that, the brown part that's called the command module, that's where the... And that's what they ride in. Come back to Earth. A huge rocket. Come back in that. Unbelievable. Look how old school that is. That's amazing. That's just incredible. The wall of fame. Every space trip they get to make this wall. Some of the most famous. This is crazy. This is the last trip to space so far. February 6th, 2020. Incredible. It's hard to imagine. They're just because there's drawers on all sides, but there is no space and somebody sleeps there, somebody sleeps there. That's just incredible.
tight in there. I know I couldn't fit. I would get scared because I would be claustrophobic. The sitting on, however, is one of two 747s that were specially equipped buttons twice to deliver cargo to the International Space Station, and then it was donated to us by SpaceX to put on display for your enjoyment. The shuttle sitting on top of the airplane exhibit, you can visit that and take an elevator up to the top and walk through the shuttle and also through the aircraft itself. The shuttle was the Independence, which never flew, but was used as a trainer for the pilots of the other five shuttles. The aircraft that is sitting on, however, is one of two 747s that were specially equipped and modified to be able to transport the shuttle across the country from where it landed to where it would next be launched in Florida. Yes. The shuttle program lasted about 30 years and was uh, mainly designed to build the International Space Station, which it did. We could not have built it without it. And it was also instrumental in the launching of and subsequent repair of the Hubble Space Telescope, as well as the deployment of many commercial and governmental satellites. Once again, you can access both of those exhibits from inside the Space Center Houston building at a location called Independence Plaza. If you have any trouble finding that, just ask anybody inside the building that dresses like me, and they'll be glad to show you how to get there. 